Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Beatriz from the Supervisory ICT and Cybersecurity Function within the Malta Financial Services Authority, bringing you another Digital Operational Resilience Act videocast. As I'm sure you know, this is a series of videocasts that we are being prepared by the authority in preparation for the DOTA regulation, which will be applicable from the 17th, January 2025 onwards. So today's episode is on Chapter 4 of the DOTA regulation, so we're going to deal with Digital Operational Resilience testing, more specifically general requirements for testing, advanced threat uh, advanced testing for threat lead penetration testing, and also we're going to briefly introduce the Tiber U framework. So as I've said before, and as, as I always like to reiterate, any comments, queries, suggestions, anything really, do not hesitate to uh, reach out to us via, via the email that you can see on the screen right now. So in today's episode, we have two very, very special guests. So we have Mihai and Dino. Thank you very much for coming. So maybe if you can briefly introduce yourself Ourselves. Start with you, Mihai. Hi, Patriz. My name is Mihai Tsatiron. I'm an IT auditor within the National Bank of Romania, and I'm specialized in auditing different technical areas such as uh, payment systems, IT service um, management, or network uh, infrastructures. During the last uh, nine months, uh, I've been on uh, secondment with the MFSA supervisory ICT risk and cybersecurity function regarding the implementation of the Tiber EU framework in the Maltese jurisdiction. In May 2022, Romania adopted the framework, which is mandatory for the financial market infrastructures administrators in the oversight area of the National Bank of Romania and uh, their critical participants. And I had the chance to get some useful experience from this process. Thank you, Beatrice. Good morning good and good morning. afternoon. <laughs> I've been in IT for over 25 years and IT support, implementations and maintenance of government and enterprise systems, including consultancy and some years of teaching. In the last seven years, I've specialized more on cybersecurity, conducting uh, audits, risk assessments, vulnerability scanning, penetration testing, and also writing or upgrading of policies and procedures in alignment with ISO 27001, NIST cybersecurity framework, GDPR and other regulations. Currently, I'm working at uh, MFSA, in the governance, risk and compliance team and, and cybersecurity, taking care of internal policies and procedures, risk assessments of products and third party suppliers, vulnerability management and cybersecurity awareness training. Thank you for so much for introducing yourselves. I think we have a wide array of experience, many years of experience, including in different jurisdictions. So this episode is going to be very interesting. So thank you once again for accepting my invite. So as I've said in the beginning, today's episode, we're going to mainly focus on chapter four of the DOTA regulation, which talks about digital operational resilience testing. Now, DOTA makes this um, difference or separation rather between general requirements for digital operational resilience testing and advanced testing through threat lead penetration testing. So the aim of this episode is mainly to compare and contrast these different um, types or, or rather, let's put it this way, frameworks for testing. So the general and the more advanced one. So the first question that I have for you guys is in terms of requirement, what financial entity will be required to do what? So which financial entity is going to have to do general testing and which financial entity might have to do advanced testing through threat light penetration testing? Okay, um, thank you for raising the question. In fact, um, you're right, there are different requirements depending on the size of the entity. Um, micro enterprises are considered less risky, so they have a certain type of testing. Um, but all other financial entities need to, at least on a yearly basis, conduct appropriate digital operational resi resilience testing program. On all the ICT systems and applications, central depositories then have also to abide by uh, some extra requirements due to the impact which they, they might have um, by having uh, vulnerability assessments carried out before deploying or redeploying of other uh, applications or systems. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to general testing, I think we can say that we have uh, three different types, uh, th three different types for financial. So we have one for micro enterprises, which as mm -hmm. you said, it's slightly less riskier, one uh, or more general one for financial entities. And on top of that, we also have extra requirements for those entities that might be considered as more risky, like central so, securities depositories yes. and uh, performing vulnerability assessments before any deployment or redeployment. So it's interesting how DOTA has this sort of embedded or inherent proportionality when it comes to it. TLPT is intended for uh, entities that provide core financial infrastructure. Only financial entities which have systemic relevance within the overall financial services ecosystem 
will be expected to perform advanced digital resilience operational testing in the form of thread-led penetration testing. Why TLPT? Because this kind of exercise has proved to be one of the most effective tools for, for assessing and improving the cyber resilience of the most ICT mature financial entities. Why only the most mature and relevant financial entities should undertake advanced testing under DORA? Because the resources required in terms of specialized knowledge, um, the necessary time for a TLPT exercise and the cost for uh, the testing are quite significant, not only for the financial entities, but also for the national competent authority that will have to oversee these exercises. The DORA competent authorities will identify financial entities that are required to perform a TLPT, considering a set of criteria regarding mainly the uh, to the ICT maturity and the importance of these financial entities to the financial sector. These criteria must be developed in the next months by the European Supervisory Authorities in the form of specific regulatory technical standards for TLPT. Mm -hmm. Just for the audience's sake, and I think this is something that we had mentioned when it came to the um, episode that we did on incidents, is that there will be a public consultation to be done on these regulatory technical standards and implementing technical standards, so jointly referred to as level two texts that are going to technically supplement the DOTA regulation. So they're, they're currently being drafted by Diazas, and there will be a public consultation for those. And obviously, we're going to let our li license holders know accordingly when the time comes. Still on general testing requirements, the DOTA regulations as financial entities need to develop a digital operation resilience testing program. And when it comes to this testing program, which by the way needs to be an inherent part of the financial entities ICT risk management framework, the DOTA regulation goes and it literally lists a series of what are to be considered appropriate tests. Um, can you give us an overview on what these appropriate tests are and how would a financial entity go and use this test and incorporate it into its on digital operation resilient testing program and how that might impact a financial entity's ICT risk management framework? Okay, financial entities need to consider within their digital operational resilience testing program the execution of appropriate tests such as vulnerability assessments and scanning, open source analysis, network ass security assessments, security gap analysis, physical security reviews, security questionnaires, source code reviews if possible, and also scenario-based security testing, performance testing, and finally penetration testing. Digi digital operational resilience testing program is an integral part of the ICT risk management framework of a financial entity. This reflects two things, that uh, number one, the financial entity needs to take account the proportionality, uh, that is its risks, when deciding what tests to do. So now that we have established and talked about uh, what is expected from a financial entity when it comes to general requirements for testing in uh, regarding specifically their own digital operation resilient testing program, I would like to focus more on the second part of testing. So we're going to talk here about advanced testing. So here I want to first set the scene. So my question is, what is the difference between a penetration testing and a threat-led penetration testing, and in turn, What's the difference between a, a threat-led penetration testing and a cyber U test? Here, the, the interesting part starts where penetration testing obviously is attacking the systems, trying to exploit them and abuse um, vulnerabilities which are found in them, which normally is, however, done in a controlled uh, um, uh, environment. So typically, the test is carried out by a team of ethical hackers who are engaged to simulate an attack on the entity's information systems, networks, applications, to identify the weaknesses that could be exploited by a, a cyber attacker. On the other hand, the threat-led penetration test is a type of pen test which uses threat intelligence related to the particular entity. The test is designed to simulate uh, the observed techniques, tactics, and procedures used by real cyber attackers on the critical functions of the tested entity, including its people, processes, and technologies. In a thread-led penetration test, the ethical hackers need to rely on the threat intelligence to build and execute more tailored and oriented attack scenarios. In May 2018, the European Central Bank published the Tiber EU framework, the first EU-wide framework intended to be used by European financial entities of systemic relevance to assess and improve their cyber resilience uh, a posture. The Tiber EU is a framework for uh, TLPT that introduces a very structured approach for testing the financial entities' cyber resilience. There are many TLPT frameworks um, that are used in Europe and outside the Europe, 
but Tybal was specific, specific design based on the experience gained by some European central banks. The adoption of framework is voluntary and may be pursued for supervisory oversight of financial stability pur purposes. Yes, each jurisdiction can customize their uh, national implementation while ensuring that all uh, mandatory requirements are met. When the framework is implemented, the national relevant authorities should decide which entities should be invited to undertake or must undertake a Tiber test and by when. So far, more than 100 Tiber tests have been conducted uh, across the Europe, uh, including for tests for entities uh, that are active in more than one jurisdiction. On the other hand, the financial entities meeting the criteria set out in the uh, regulation would be required to carry out threadlet penetration testing periodically. So for the selected entities under the DORA regu regulation, the TLPT would become mandatory. Thank you for your answers. So um, in cases where financial entities will need to do both, how will pen testing and threadlet penetration testing interact? Under DORA, the financial entities shall ensure that appropriate tests that are conducted on um, all ICT systems and applications supporting um, critical or important functions at least every year. The financial entities that are required to undertake advanced testing should conduct TRPT every three years. Having said that, the entity should uh, develop their testing strategy considering the regulatory requirements. For example, an entity may not necessarily need to carry out a uh, penetration test in the same year when a TLPT is planned to be undertaken. Thank you very much for your answers. So th these are all of the questions that I had for you guys today. Do you have any more comments maybe? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Beatrice, for, for hosting us. And uh, we hope we shared the knowledge and, and uh, it will be helpful for financial entities to uh, prepare more for DORA. Sure will, sure will. Thank you for inviting us on this podcast. And I hope that we are able to present you with a gut summary of the DORA TLPT requirements, and we are also open to any inquiry you may have regarding the DORA cyber resilience testing. But you know, this is not an ultimate farewell for Dino and Mihai because they're coming back on the next episode. So we're going to continue to dive, to dive deeper into chapter four of the DORA regulation. But in the next video cast, we're going to introduce the Tiber U framework into a little bit of more detail. So stay tuned. Uh, so thank you very much for um, watching. As usual, questions, comments, queries, suggestions, feedback can be sent to the email that you can see on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.